Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning here at St. Mary's Fleeton, Virginia. We are glad that you've chosen to join us this morning. We hope that this will be a service of peace and healing to you and um, bring you a sense of comfort in this time. Let us begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now for our lessons this morning. First lesson, 2 Samuel. When the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, 
Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast and my arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor any wicked man bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and love shall be with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Second reading from Romans 16. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our preacher this morning is uh, the Reverend Dr. Mary Brennan Thorpe of the Diocese of Virginia. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Even in this era when written correspondence appears to be obsolete, we're still receiving some Christmas cards at our house. They may be from our dentist or from a nonprofit we donate to or even from our bishop, but we still get those artifacts of past traditions. Not the number we once got, but still a few. And if those cards are coming from individuals who are part of a Christian tradition rather than from corporations, there's often a picture of the Virgin Mary as a key image. Perhaps she's holding baby Jesus or she's on a donkey headed to Bethlehem. Or perhaps the picture represents this gospel moment. Angel Gabriel stands there moving towards her. She rises in shock at his presence. An angel in shock at his message. In some icons and paintings of this moment, she raises a single hand as if to say, wait a minute, you said what? It would be understandable, that reaction, wouldn't it? Here she is, a good Jewish girl, just engaged to Joseph, and this incomprehensible, unbelievable moment, this message would seem just plain crazy. I appreciate that she raises her head as if to say, hey, wait a minute. She's young, yes, she's probably only marginally educated, but she's got common sense. She wants to know more. To use a technical term, she claims her agency. She claims her right to know more of the story before she responds. She claims her right to her voice too, and to her choice. God has chosen her, but she has a choice too. 
as things progress in this conversation. Does one actually speak aloud with an angel or is it just sort of a mind to mind kind of thing? She claims that right to choose. If you doubt me on this, if you've been convinced by the sweet Renaissance pictures of a submissive little rutabaga of a girl, take a closer look at the song that she sings when she shares her news a little later at the home of her cousin Elizabeth, the song that we call the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones. He has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. This song, it's a battle cry, a warning that God's mercy will now turn the tables on those in power and provide succor to those who have been oppressed. Look out, you mighty ones, your world is about to turn upside down. Think of another woman's song, even more ancient. The song of Miriam, Moses' sister. It's shorter than, Mag than the Magnificat, just a few lines celebrating God's victory as the Israelites escape from Pharaoh by crossing the Red Sea. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. Look at what happened to the mighty ones. God's mercy has turned the tables on those in power and has provided succor to those who have been oppressed. God has turned their world upside down. Songs of celebration, praising God who causes an unimaginable thing to happen for the benefit of God's people. God's working in our lives, participating in the victory of the chosen over those who would crush them, co-creating a new day of equity, justice, sustenance, and joy. Mary, Moses' sister, is not a passive woman sitting on the sidelines and humming a quiet song. She's playing her tambourine and singing out loud. It's the same with Mary, this backcountry teenager, accosted by God's messenger. She hears this messenger out, and then she responds. She responds with strength because in this choice, this acceptance of what God has asked of her, she becomes the co-creator of Emmanuel, God with us. Mary says, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Although we hear few of her words elsewhere in the Gospels, in this moment she speaks, she claims her voice, her response, let it be with me according to your word, is all about the choice to join herself to Creator God through the Holy Spirit. Despite the fact that it will make her life more complicated than she had ever imagined, despite the fact that it may well scandalize her friends and family, despite the fact that it may end in ways no one could anticipate. She finds her voice and she claims her acceptance of what God has in mind. 
none of this merry, meek, and mild in this moment. She says yes out loud to God and to God's invitation in praise and power and in love, the very love that would cause God to send his only son to earth to live with us, to teach us, to die for us. She claims her voice to say yes in love. She is not the only one who can do that. How and when do we claim our voice? How and when do we say yes to God in a song of praise and love and power? The opportunities to do that were not exclusively limited to two millennia ago. They are now. How and when? Do we speak and act as Jesus has instructed us? In a few short days from now, we remember the gift of love that God has given us through Mary's agency. The helpless baby born in an animal shelter, then the bold child who speaks to the rabbis in the temple, then the wandering teacher and preacher and healer who allows himself to be broken out of love for us. If at no other time, why would we not look every day from now until Christmas for those moments when we can claim our voice to speak and act as Mary did and as Jesus did? If at no other time, why would we not show compassion or cry out for justice or speak words of comfort expecting nothing in return? or offer help in more concrete ways. Christ's impending birth demands that we claim our voices to join with his. His time. His time to practice the spiritual discipline of claiming our voices, however the Spirit guides us to do it. Who knows? If we try it, we might discover how we can be co-creators, too, of the world that God intends. Not the broken one which we currently inhabit. Out of love. For love. In love. Who knows? As spiritual disciplines sometimes play out, it could turn out to be habit-forming. And wouldn't that be a glorious thing? Amen. Please join me in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord saying, Lord, have mercy. For the holy church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault in the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, 
and Susan, our bishops, and all of our bishops and ministers, and all the holy people of God, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Christ, that our divisions may cease, and that all may be one as you and the Father are one, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this congregation of St. Mary's Fleeton, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our enemies and those who wish us harm, and for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the communion of your church, and those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints they may have rest in this place where there is no pain or grief but life eternal. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those who suffer from COVID-19, we also pray for Jim and Carol Wiley, Richard Clark, Ray Rogers, Winifred Delano, Aileen Robinson, the Williams family, Lois Hett, Donald Frund, Sidney and Lee Dunn, Mike and Ellie Roberts, Paul Carey, Linda Booth, and Judy Jett. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Redeeming Lord, whose will is reconciliation and peace, help us heal our divided nation. Give election winners humility and grace, and give their opponents solace and hope. Birth in our nation a new season of respect, understanding, negotiation, and mutual trust. Help us put aside the temptation to demean or denigrate opponents and to find new ways to communicate our convictions that honor the dignity of every human being. This we ask in the name of the one who has given us the ministry of reconciliation, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. 
and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now let us pray for a new priest in charge, which we are seeking to find here at St. Mary's. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this family of St. Mary's and for this time of transition and for the opportunities that lie ahead of us. Help us, O oh God, to trust in your wisdom and direction and teach us to recognize the sound of your voice as we take time to listen for your leading. Pour upon us as a discernment group and a church family an abundance of your Holy Spirit that with clear minds and open hearts, we, trusting not in our own understanding, recognize the ways we will grow in faith, unity, and love as we trust you in this process. We pray also for the person whom we will call to be our next priest in charge. Protect and guide your servant as we find our way to each, with each other. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ surround us and guide us this day and forevermore. Amen. And now let us pray in the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We have a couple of announcements. One, um, we do wish everyone well. Uh, we hope that you will uh, practice good habits of safety during this time of the pandemic and that you will stay well and healthy. Um, tomorrow night, Monday, the 21st of December, is the winter solstice. And on that day, the longest day, the longest night of the year, we um, recognize those who may be grieving uh, over a loss of a job or a loved one at this time and, and find it difficult to um, celebrate in that sort of Norman Rockwell Christmas, um, Johnny Mathis, <laughs> happy sort of soul, um, that we recognize those feelings of sadness and, um, and we give them a place to put them in the hands of God. That service will be up on, the, um, on YouTube tomorrow morning. So we invite you to join us for that. Um, next Sunday, um, we will have a very special service. It is uh, the Office of Lessons and Carols being done from Suwannee University, the University of the South um, in Suwannee, Tennessee, in their chapel there at the university. Um, it's always a very beautiful service, so I invite you to um, worship with us uh, during that service also. Um, it will be up on YouTube on next Sunday instead of our morning, regular morning worship. One last announcement, and that is that we will have a Christmas Eve service um, on um, December the 24th, and it will also be up on YouTube, so you can watch it. It'll go up in the morning, even though it's a, a normally a, an eve service in the evening. But you can watch it anytime. So please join us to worship on that special event of Christmas Eve. And now may you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.